Yehovah Malak, Ola Mulamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakesh, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantacrita, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda at Yehovah, Derek Emuna, Bakar, Mishvat. Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives, dear brethren, to the praise of Lord God's glory, by seeking and searching His will, understanding His glory, and realizing the very sole purpose for which cause we have been kept alive to be as a martyr for Christ, being beheaded for the word of the Lord my God. When Christ our Lord our God returns, as per Revelation chapter 20 in verse number 4, right from the beginning of his disciples when he has chosen them, many martyrs and then after the completion of the canon of scripture, many true believers, and that's the word which we need to look, many true believers, who have been martyred for the word of the Lord, my God. The prayer being prayed for us in John chapter 17, the greatest prayer for the church, church particularly beginning with John 12:29. Ending in John 17, 26, the first time of the prophecy towards the church age, we could call it, prayed for us, in particular verses number John 17 in 8. We need to look very carefully the word in the Greek, which calls for us the right and the bona fide duty of first the pastor teacher, because whenever we look the word in the Greek for the word of God, it is logos and at the other end it is rima. Logos meant to say the Bible in the completed canon of scripture for us, the 66 books. Rima meant to say the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in teaching to us the thing what he has been trained every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by becoming a Kathab exegete. Kneeling down and writing the word of the Lord, because it is his word that we need to tremble. And we have to be always in subjection like the way how Christ our Lord our God led forth for us a great example on this earth. In everything being humble enough, in everything being driven, in the Lord God, power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The same divine dinosphere given for us to walk in it and produce the character of Christ and to glorify God the Father, Lord God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit. To such great battle what we have been chosen in the church age, with the great privilege of all time, yet 
we not surviving in the role model given for us by Christ wherewith he said for us in the great temptation given by Satan after his fasting for 40 days that man does not live by bread alone but by every word which proceedeth out from the mouth of my Christ and keeping these things once again as a great recommendation for us to correct up our lives in Psalms 36 verses 8 and 9 he writes we learn the word of the Lord my God in the church and that too it is a Jehovah's word and that word is what you have been taught through the Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher the bona fide work wherewith a male believer to whom this gift has been given dedicating his life as a sacrifice to Christ growing up day by day in the word of the Lord and teaching the truth and nothing but the truth when he has learned the truth because here we have in John 17 18 a great word which we need to look that the declarations which you have given to me in English it says for I have given unto them the words which they've gavest me but in the Greek it says O T ta rimata adodakas moi dedeka oitos kai oitoi elabon that is that the declarations which you have given to me I have given to them and they took them and this is how we need to take the word they have received them it is nothing but in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit in the Spirit of Christ Galatians 3 26 and 27 being baptized we take these words to understand that the kingdom of Lord God is nothing but joining as disciples growing up as grammatias and in return making disciples of all the nations and such will be the kingdom of Christ Romans 14 17 comma 18 where we read that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking it is about righteousness peace and joy in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that we might prove what is acceptable in the sight of you with such men Lord God is well pleased with such slaves in Christ Lord God the Father is well pleased and furthermore we need to write and look and understand dear brethren the approval of men has been given to them so here he says they have received have in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit in the baptism of Christ and the following verse is where and the following line is very important and have known surely that I came out from thee and they know truly that beside you I came out the word meant to say agnoson that is ginosko alatia truly that from you I came out this is the thing is talking to the believers praying for the church age and saying that they have known truly that I came from you if Christ our Lord our God has truly come from God the Father then do you know from where we have come and whom we have to represent if Christ our Lord our God prayed for us that we are the people we have kept his word then do we truly know that we have to glorify God the Father and Son in the world and make the unbelievers also to believe in Christ and make them to understand as the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of these adult sons we should be the people to be graduated enough and deliver the creation from the slavery of the bondage of sin that is not believing in Christ how they could believe when we could truly know that we are of heavenly citizens when we could truly exercise the power and authority given to us when we truly believe and speak the words of my Christ but we don't even have the faith like the Syrophoenician woman who said even the dogs eat the dust particles or the bread pieces which fall under the table and for that pleasing Christ our Lord our God heals her daughter who has been demon possessed 
the entrance towards the world, what we Gentiles are. Taking this example of a Syrophoenician woman, it meant to say the world is possessed by demon. By that we meant to say cosmos diabolicus and its thinking. There is no right rimata declaration of the right work of the pastor teacher. If there would be in the standards of the rimata declaration of the right pastor teacher, then every believer would truly know that they need to conform to the image of his dear beloved son. Every believer would truly know that they have to come to the mature stature of the thinking of Christ. And every believer indeed of Romans 1 7, they would come to know very accurately and clearly that we are called to Jesus Christ. The word italics to be are called to be saints, not found in the original, but it is called to be Jesus Christ. If every believer could know that we are here to manifest the right work of my Christ, if every believer would truly accomplish the goal of God the Father, the delight of Christ, because that is what we have been called, to fulfill the delight of Lord God the Father. If they would truly understand these things, then they wouldn't be in the possession of demon. The world itself has been blinded in the possession of demons. But we are not of the world, we are being sent into the world born into the world, taken out from the world, sanctified and given to be a gift to Christ Jesus our Lord, so that we shall truly know Ginosko Aletheia. The English says they know surely. And that doesn't give you the essence, but in the Greek it says Ginosko, to have knowledge, and surely what has been translated is nothing but aletheia. They have known for truth the truth. And that's the right work of the pastor teacher in discussing to you the fact of life. Dear brethren, sanctify yourselves. We shall look and consider the things of today's message. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again we come unto the grace to learn thy word. Father, as the psalmist says in the third file, from beginning with the verse number 62 to 68. He goes on to write, teach for us all the times, Lamad, 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 so that we could learn thy prescriptions and make up our life according to the standards because they're always good and you're always doing good. So that when you could give us discernment to understand the word of the Lord. To this extent, Father, before they could end up in depression, we pray, let them be renovated according to the standards of their word and come back and learn, carry their cross every day and enjoy in your calling for which cause you are called every believer in Christ to glorify thee to the highest. By conforming to your image and growing up to the complete major stature of thinking in Christ. To this extent, Father, as we go and study these things, we pray, let God the Holy Spirit could enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. As we were looking yesterday about Psalms 36 verses 8 and 9, which once again clearly describes the work of the pastor teacher and the work of the church. The church is a ground and pillar of truth. The church is a place where people would come to learn Bible doctrine. It is not a place for lies. Neither it could be called to be a place of street. Looking into the present scenario of the Christendom in comparison with Genesis chapter 19, many have become like the family of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah the head of the family sitting at the entrance of the gate, finding the two angels. And when we look in 18th chapter of Genesis, when Abraham saw the three angels coming unto him, or Lord Jehovah followed by two angels, that is again representing the Trinity, 
he ran unto them, and they were pleased to come and to take rest under his tree. And he did not go to plead, but rather he said, If thy servant, if it has been pleased in thy sight. And therefore he goes runningly and he prepares everything. He produces before them the milk, the butter, and the meat, or the curd, the butter, and the meat. And then we find the discourse about the standards of his sovereignty. Because Abraham has been found faithful no matter what, against hope he believed in the Lord. And furthermore, in 1819, he says that he's going to teach his children the way that they have to go. And when it comes to chapter 19, we look loth, particularly in verse number 2. He begins to bow down to them in verse number 1. And here we have something of the revolution of Christ wherewith we should learn from this that the two angels were not heartfully willing to go to the home where Lot lived. So here we look and there came two angels to Sodom and even at evening and Lot sat in the gate of the Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up meet them and bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, that is what he's requesting, into your servant's house. It is the servant house. That is what we have to be always. It is not our house. It is what we are the servants of Jehovah on this earth. Everything belongs unto him. It is in his hand, as we read in First Samuel 2, 6 and 7, to make us alive or to put to death, to make us rich or destitute. It is in his hand for us to understand that it is he who is going to humble and it is he who is going to exalt. It is in his hand. So all things belongs to Christ. So here Lot recognizes that sovereignty and the omnipotent of Lord. And he gives that glory to Christ and says, the servant of you. He doesn't say, come to my house. He says, I am thy servant and that house belongs to thee. But that house, what it should be, cleansed and kept proper for Lord's will. Wherewith, like Abraham, the way how he called the Lord God and he made him to rest under his tree, producing the fruits. He did not maintain that great liveliness of truth in his life. That's what we need to learn from here. And therefore, and they say, your servant's house, tarry all night, that is, lodge in, and wash your feet. And that's what he says, loath. But when we look in Genesis chapter 18 in verse number 4, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself. Here the word is nothing but to lean on. That is, you be relaxed, Lord under the tree and i will fetch your morsel of bread and comfort your heart after that you shall pass on for therefore are you come to your servant and they said so do as thou hast said this is the life of abraham the way how he has maintained his purity and then he says in verse number three my lord if now i have found favor in thy sight pass not away i pray thee from thy servant but here we look, the way how he's going to rest in 19.2. He calls them tarry all night, the word loom, to lodge and to pass over just to abide. And then, wash your feet, rakats, that is to wash. And you shall rise up early, that is, he says, you can be there morning, shakam, to, start to, to rise and to start early. And to go on your ways, halak. And then they said, they did agree like the way how Abraham, Abraham was agreed in 18.4 of Genesis. No. And they said, no, we will abide in the street. We will lodge in the street. Broad place, open place, all night. This will be very, very disturbing for those Christians who haven't lived a life of truth. The reason over here is 
as in an instant when Abraham asked unto the Lord, Abide so that you could take this morsel of fruit. They said, Yes, do it. But when it comes to the process of here in Genesis 19, in the case of Lot, they did not agree. They said, No. And the point what we need to learn from this, though it is a servant's house, that is this tabernacle being the fellowship of my Christ for the Shekinah glory of Lord God, if it is not in accord with the Rimata declaration of truth to know my Christ, surely, or Ginisco Aletia, surely, then, in spite of grieving and squelching, resisting and lying and vexing to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It is the great grace of the Lord God to still dwell in us, but no controlling power of it. Here also the same procedure. Though he calls it is a servant house, that is your, that I am servant of your God. And though he calls him to please come, wash your feet, rest a while, and tomorrow early morning itself he can go because it is evening now. And then they say, no. Though this body being the temple of the living Lord of a God, if we haven't known my Christ, surely the answer will be no. Because you haven't declared my Christ to these unbelievers, you haven't made them to become disciples for the great commission given to us. At the first instant, it is a rejection. And they look the life of Lot being so miserable. Now from there on we look. When you compromise into the world, this is what it happens. The Jairus daughter, when she was dead, people said plainly, she is dead. That's what the human viewpoint is all about. But the divine viewpoint of Christ, he says, fear not, only believe she is sleeping. The delay it might have occurred for the healing of a twelve years old woman. And when he goes into the home, we look and we read that in Mark chapter 5. There were people who were weeping and they were not making him to come to look the power of Christ. The first thing he threw them out. In the same manner, if you don't throw out the things that are not making you to be controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, are putting to death. Your life, dear brethren, will not stand for the witness of John 17, 8. Because you don't learn the Rimata Declaration on the first hand by the pastor, teacher, bona fide gift. And on the second hand, or the second terms, if you would look, Besides being growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, you use the grace of my Lord to grow up into the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. And you love to reign in them in lies. That's what it will happen. You think you are really doing the work of the Lord, being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, never you will do the work of the Lord. They do not even love to step into his house. They say, no, we shall tarry all night in the street. And then, if that's the fate for us, not being controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though being sanctified and kept apart, and you have been now belonging to the property of my Christ, and if you don't do according to his will, what an insult it would be before these unbelievers of this world. What an insult it would be before Satan, to my Christ, my Lord, saying that you have chosen this people. You thought this people have been sanctified and kept apart for your work, but this people are not worthy. This people are not even worthy wherewith you should dwell in them. Because they got love to give you lip service, but their hearts are far away. They love to establish their standards according to man-made traditions. But as far as the word of the Lord my God is concerned, they're not even worried a bit. Will this be the same fate for us? 
when we all stand at the judgment seat of Christ and Lord God, the Holy Spirit has been grieved and waxed and squelched. We read that summary yesterday in Acts 7, 51, the summary of the Israelites, a long-term journey for them. 69 weeks lapsed out and they have only one week left over, that is after the rapture of the church. They take in for seven years. And in this history, we look them as the word goes to write in Acts 7. This is prior the law that could be given to them through Moses. The way how Loth life has been examined because Christ our Lord our God looks what is within your heart in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He now allows to look what is it you appear outward because he looks inward and he knows very well what you are. Therefore he said to him, though he may bow down before his presence and asks them to come to their home, the, the home of their servant. And that's what every believer should know. Their body is not their own. They have been bought with a great price. Therefore they need to glorify my Christ in the body wherewith they have been purchased. So in Acts 7.51 we look the summary after the law given in their hands. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. That is, you headstrong because your head has been fixed like one place as a solid material. It cannot turn and once again look unto the ways of heaven and come back to Christ. Therefore, after these things, he said, who can build a house for Christ? Solomon built. It was for a tabernacle of witness and the favor was shown to David, but he missed it out. He missed it out once again by looking into the standards of this world. Therefore, we need to look these words very carefully. And Solomon built, we know the description of Solomon, the, with the same wisdom and knowledge what he built, he is now building to his wives to be impressed. The gods which are no gods at all, what a shame it is for us. After that he begins and he tells to this people of Israelites, you stiff-necked and hard-heartened. Even the way when David was departing, he would have said to Solomon, the way how he took his wife and why he is not able to build a home, why Lord God never allowed him to build a home, he would have said that reason. If Solomon would have been sharp enough, he would have asked his father, why, Lord, why the Jehovah in Elohim hasn't allowed you to build this house? And if David would have been upright in that standards after Lord God's own heart, he would have explained. Because I killed an innocent person who would have been actually the husband of your mother, Bathsheba. And what an upright man Uriah the Hittite was. When we look the plot or the things how David planned to Uriah the Hittite, he should certainly prick our hearts. How desperately wicked and sick is human's heart. He calls him and says, you can go and rest with your wife because your wife is now pregnant. He doesn't say so, but he knew what is in his mind. And then furthermore, he continues to say, have some drink so that after drinking, he could lose his sense and he can go back to his home. But he did not go. He slept on the door gates. And then when for the first time David asks Uriah, why can't you go to your home? The answer what he replied should have changed the heart of David. Having a true clear consciousness in his heart, like the way how extras as his has in Esther for the work of Mordecai. That night he couldn't sleep because he is not honoring a person who has saved his life for the trap laid down by them. Mordecai says to Esther, Esther says to the king, an unbelieving king, his conscience is not allowing him to sleep. 
because he hasn't paid proper honor to the person who saved his life. Here the believing King David, when Uriah the Hittite says, the unbelieving man, how could I go and enjoy when the Ark of the Covenant and the Lord's army is in the battlefield? That would have changed and pricked the heart of David and he would have said, all right, come, let's go now. I'll take my sword and come. We'll go to the battlefield and protect the Ark of the Covenant. But the hardness of the heart more greater than Pharaoh caused him to think he is determined not to go, now I'll make him to drink. Rather obeying for truth, they rejected the truth and they loved lies for truth. The same thing over here, hard-hearted and stiff-necked. And when Solomon was building the temple, God the Father gives an information for us that he also built with the same wisdom temples to idols to impress his wives, women. He went along to weaponry, he went along to wealth. And at the end of Ecclesiastes, he concludes, I did a blunder mistake. Lord God, the Holy Spirit writes a word against David. This thing, it did not please me about the murder plot of Uriah the Hittite. And David would have said to his son Solomon, Why am I not able to build this temple? Because I murdered the right man who was for your mother, being her husband first. And he would have told to Solomon, the characters of such man, the man who was faithful and loyal, the man who feared the Ark of the Covenant, which he was in the battlefield and he couldn't go to be with his wife, the man who was of a nature who said, taking in his own hand the, let, the death letter being written to Joab, and he writes now David to kill him, to murder him. Faithfully taking that letter, not even able to look that it is a note of his death letter. He did not even open that. He went and gave straight the way to Joab. And for these things, if David would have said to Solomon and said, Be careful with the Lord God whom you are dealing with. Though I am a man after Lord God's own heart, he rejected me not to build the temple. Then how much more careful you ought to be when building the temple of Lord God. More careful than the way how Uriah the Hittite answered, saying that how can I go and rest with my wife, leaving the Ark of the Covenant in the battlefield. At least by that chance, Solomon would have alert and he would have been there in a, in a way to realize and to teach. I shall not build Neither I shall follow the ways of my father, being tempted for many concubines, of many women and many wives, in order to impress them to use the wisdom of Lord God to build devils upon devils, man-made gods. At least you would have learned that lesson. But do you know, dear brethren, what happens? When there is no true fear in your heart, the right fear of Lord God the Father, you will become hard-hearted and stiff-necked. That's the fate here, he says. Uncircumcised in heart, though circumcised in the flesh, uncircumcised in their ears, though having to brag and say, we are the circumcised, we don't have any fellowship with the Samaritans. And they do always antipipto to run against the word to resist antipipto antipipto holy spirit that is what hagios numa as your fathers did again when he was giving them the counsel about my christ they also do the same 
Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them with shivved before of the coming of the just one? That is what my Christ. When this my Lord, my rock, was being manifested to them to come, they killed them all. And you have been now the traitors, the betrayers, and then murderers. That is what he says. Even we are the same. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. We have now received the completed can of scripture by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And have we or are we guarding it? Full as so the word kept meant to say to watch unto God. So these three verses quite obviously describe what is the life of this Old Testament Jews. These three verses clearly describe for us. When you shall speak the truth, their hearts will be cut into pieces. And they gnash their teeth. And they love to kill when we speak the truth. This is the present scenario. When we love them and tell them the truth, being humble enough, they don't want to take the truth because they think the Rimata declarations, what they're taking is enough for them. And they have truly known, that is what Ginisco Aletia, they have truly known my Christ. But here, dear brethren, we know very well, they haven't known anything at all. But Christ, our Lord of God, says and prays on behalf of the church age that they shall manifest thee truly to them. The reason of the failure is no proper remata declaration. In Lamentations chapter 2, we have a great case against the pastor teachers. He says for us, Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things. The vain word is again shav, which is called for us, desolating, or in simple words, useless, worthless emptiness of speech. The useless, worthless emptiness of speech are rampant to the core in our pulpits today. Without exegesis, without isagogics, without categories. These people are ampled to the core. They are not really declaring the word of the Lord. They are like the way. They think like the way have Lot persuaded them to come to their home. They also, they can think, they can work their business in the standards of man-pleasing and not really Lord cut divine standards of pleasing. So the foolish, the prophets have seen vain and foolish things, tapel. The word is tasteless, unseasoned. It is frivolity of foolish things, unsavory, untempered. And they have not discovered the iniquity. This is what it happens. They have not made a gala exposition or naked exposition of your sin, iniquity, our own nature. That's what we have to look like the Syrophoenician woman when she comes to my Christ and she looks. There we find the word of the Lord about these Gentiles. What these Gentiles meant they are. They are always demonic possessed. That's what we have to look. And what it is that these are demonic possessed women? The people who don't believe in Christ. The people who haven't exposed themselves to look that they are still in lies. The people who haven't come to look in the light so that they could look the light of, law, of the Lord. When they could look the true light, then they would look the true light of their life. But they haven't looked the true light. They're just looking silly things, stupid things, idiotic things. That's what we find in Psalms 36 verses 9. With thee, O Lord, they are the fountains of life, and in thy light we shall see our light. That light is nothing but gala exposition of our sin. Naked exposition of what we are. 
and until and unless we could thoroughly examine in our hearts and check up to what extent are we really doing the will of God up to what extent are we really being for the work of Christ we shall be still observing vain and foolish things being taught by the so-called false and fakery of lies therefore in Job 11 when Zophar dictates he gives a discourse for many of the people if they would wake up to understand he says canst thou by searching find out God question mark canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection as I as heaven what canst thou do deeper than hell what canst thou know the measure thereof is longer than the earth and the broader than the sea if he cut off and shut up or gather together then who can hinder him for he knoweth vain men he seeth wickedness also will he not then consider for vain man would be wise though man be born uh, like a wild as called if thou prepare thy heart and stretch out thine hands toward him if iniquity be in thine hand put it far away and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles that's the key but then thou shall lift up thy face without spot yes thou shall be steadfast and shall not fear because thou shall forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday shall thou shine forth thou shall be as the morning and thou shall be secure because there is hope yeah thou shall dig about thee and thou shall take thy rest in safety that is what you can dwell in safety also thou shall lie down and none shall make thee afraid yes many shall make suit unto thee but the eyes of the wicked shall fail that is suit into sense they come to ask for you to pray and be of of you but the eyes of the wicked shall fail and they shall not escape and their hope shall be as giving up of their ghost so here the word for us is Lord God knoweth the death doomers of futility and he is seeing lawlessness and not he shall consider that's what the question mark is when he is seeing lawlessness shall he not consider therefore the lawlessness which begins in our heart has to be cleansed first without cleansing our lawlessness in our hearts we cannot be the people what he intends us to be for him on this church age very few are the people who would look and search their lawlessness beginning in their heart here as well the same thing we read until and unless you make your gala exposition of your sins naked exposition of what you are grieving and squelching and vexing and lying to Lord God the Holy Spirit you cannot come to look and understand the will and the work of the Lord the same thing over here for us as Peter does in Luke chapter 5 he says depart from me O Lord I am a sinner that goodness caused him to be like a rock and the frontier to do all the things on behalf of the disciples even as such today when we go back and confess and could learn and understand how great a sinners we are till then we shall not come to know what vain and foolish things you are heeding up therefore he says the world like the daughter of Syrophoenician woman is been there with devil demons where with Satan the prince of the power of this world has blinded their eyes and minds not to learn the truth so is this world and the one who has been born in the world as Christ our Lord our God praise you have given me them out of the world sanctifying and kept apart for their work they are the people they have kept thy word and here there is no other way for us to give reasons Lord we haven't known this we haven't known that all those reasons of our silly people who love to still absorb vain and foolish things but with Christ our Lord our God we are called to be Jesus Christ by believing in Christ and then growing up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine we have been said to take our cross every day and follow my Christ conforming to the image to the image of his dear beloved son that is Christ Jesus our Lord and coming to the full major stature of the thinking of Christ and do the work of Christ if Christ our Lord our God would be here on this earth 
in the same way as everyone who would receive like the age of my Christ at 30 year, 33 years of his resurrection, the way how he is going to be appearing, everyone would receive that same age or that age of resurrection bodies to us. Then why is it not we are able to look now and form to the confirmation of the inner man to be like the mind of Christ? So we need to wake up, dear brethren. We need to understand up to what extent are we really searching out the gala exposition of our sins. Every day we need to come close enough to look. What is that that is hindering my Lord? What is that that is causing me to be far away from the plan and the work of my Christ? What is that that is causing me to think against the word of the Lord and letting me to depart from the word of the Lord? Therefore, dear brethren, we need to constantly check our life. It is like the wave that we have been dealing with Lord God because the true remedy for him is the true fear for Christ. And it is a love and respect to honor him wholeheartedly by judging your own self and depending on that and esteeming others better than ourselves. Because we have to be the people always humble and meek. Blessed are the poor in spirit, he said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this poor in spirit denotes qualities and attitudes befitting the humble and meek and it presupposes self-judgment and self-denial removing all hindrances in view of a total commitment to the Lord and his interest removing all hindrances in view of a total commitment to the Lord and his and, and his interests so here gala exposition of the sin reminds us of these things that he has to teach us his ways if we don't learn his ways that's what even in the psalmist he says for us in 119 search me diligently O lord how many days more therefore he teaches for us a very very unique verse which is so great in 119 in verse number 66 which writes for us to understand and to wake up that the good of you, O Lord, you have did with the servant of you, so that the word of Yahweh has to be fulfilled. And coming to verse number 66, he says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. And then he says in 67, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Here the word in the Hebrew, Ere, or in error, I am being humbled. I, one, erroring. The word Shagag is absolute destruction, that is astray. And I am being humbled over here. It is not humbly, really, but it meant to say to be in depressed state of mind. If you don't examine your sin before the Lord God in such great humility, because without knowing that you have been destroyed, without having the word of the Lord God in you as an insurance or as a security, you love to go back and take your security in the standards of this world. And since you take the security in the standards of this world, it leads you always to be depressed. Because what men is, the people like Zaria's case, they would say, she is dead, don't trouble the master. But Lord God would say only one thing for us, fear not, only believe. So when you go back to trust the world, the world will give you saying that it is dead, it is not for, for anything. In the same manner, Satan, teaching lies through false pastor teachers, will guide you not to join as disciple, will guide you not to grow up as grammatias. It will lead you to show forth great prophecies. It will lead you to show forth great miracles and wonders. And it will lead you for you to be there to say, you are just partaking in the elements of Lord God, that's enough. Why is it that you need to go to the church every day? Go weekly once. It loves to feed you in the standards of 
the streets, not as the right pastor teacher teaching them up in the church so that you could be well, acqu well acquainted or thoroughly know my Christ. So he says for us, before I was afflicted, the word ana, or to be occupied with depression. The result of depression comes when first you go shagag. And Shagag are the people who haven't known the mind of Christ, neither will come to look their gala exposition of their sin because they love to still believe vain and foolish things being taught by false pastor teachers without exegesis. So here in his death march, he writes for us very, very important things. The gala exposition of the sin. Here in Lamentations is as good as also the death march because they have been taken into captivity and Jeremiah records these things for us. In Psalm 119, Ezra Father records these things for us. Before I was going into depression, first I was went into astray, shagag. So the direct result, shagag, is nothing but being occupied with demon, being occupied with lies being occupied with rituals without reality, being occupied with the profession of the church, rather than being in the word of the Lord my God forever, being occupying to be with the men who come weekly once rather than fearing not and following the people who would come every day to, to Bible doctrine, carrying their cross and becoming the disciples of Christ and growing up as grammatias. So the first thing comes to you, dear brethren, is that your astray shagag. Then comes depression. The shagag or astray is nothing but your brethren for us to understand. False doctrine, lies lead you to astray. Lies always leads you to astray, dear brethren. Because lie is a lie. It cannot be truth. You don't go for exegesis, you are teaching them lies. You may love to make them to be remorse. You may call them to enjoy the standards of coming weekly once, learning, teaching them some morality lessons. You are just daubing them with untempered mortar, not breaking up the fallow grounds to dig and put in the word of the Lord. And you may say, what for me? I've come over here for weekly one service or monthly one service for some pieces of bread of some handful of barley. What I am worried about to make disciples, joining them as disciples, growing them up as scribes. Why I should be either worried about that? I'm worried only about my fatty belly. Because the prophets have seen vain and foolish things. The prophets who are those people who would give you a warning of forthcoming. In the Old Testament it was forthcoming, now it is forthcoming. Because we have seen the completed count of scripture and we find in Revelation 20, particularly Revelation book is a gift given to the church by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a gift husband giving to his wife. And there he writes for us, who will be the people entitled? The first three chapters for the church, the last three chapters in the millennium, and then what will be our fate? If we don't obey or wash our clothes according to the commandments of Bible doctrine, and where we will be placed, what will be our position? If we are really doing the work of the Lord God, we would drink the clear crystal water being coming out from the throne of Lord God and from the throne of the Lamb of Christ. And he furthermore teaches to us, they shall see his face, they shall be his slaves. In, 21, in 20 to 14 he says, this will be the people with authority entering into the standards of the true life. With exuse authority they enter into the places where there is full of gold, and streets made with gold and to eat from the tree of life, but they that are without. So in this book of Revelation, he gives for us, are we really holding forth to be the witnesses for the word of truth? 
And in this gift, he teaches to us completely in the fourth telling, what we are telling to you every day. This will be your life. This will be your fate. Use rebound. Come back and be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Do not waste your time and grace un, in the in the unworthily manner, but rather being called to Christ in a worthy manner. Do the things of Christ, our Lord, our God, to the highest. This is what we want you. This is what we want you to teach. This is what we want you to express. This is what we want to train you up. This is what the Word of the Lord God teaches to us. This is forth telling as a New Testament prophet. And you don't want to learn that. You want to be like Lot, where the two angels were not interested to go to the home until he could persuade them or ask them to come and beg them to come. Because they already know when they enter into the home what things will occur. In the same manner, dear brethren, whether you have been truly controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in doing His will, whether you are truly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and performing His will, whether you are really making up yourselves into the gala exposition of your sins or naked extreme exposition of your sins or not, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, knows very well. Therefore, we cannot be in the standards of sinners. He says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word, Shamir, to guard and to absorb. And what is the word over here? It is Imra, the utterance of the speech of Lord. And therefore, dear brethren, if we would still go to continue in our affliction, it is purely because you have been listening to Shagag which is a error, it is an error scripturally because they don't exegete, it is, a it is an error in their mental standards because they don't fear to give back to Lord God that which is belonging to my Christ. And ignorantly and arrogantly they love to go for error, shagag. And this shagag always leads them to die a sinner to death. And dear brethren, before you die sin unto death, you will end up into depression. The word afflicted is ana, which is nothing but to be depressed, to be downcasted. In a positive sense, it is to humble and to get humiliated. But here, the people, they have been already rejecting and they're becoming shagags. It is to depress. But he says, I have kept thy word. Therefore, there is a hope for you to come back and make up yourselves into the gala exposition of the truth. Make up yourself into the true standards of the truth. You haven't realized what is the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, given for us to enjoy the true life in the divine dinosphere without grieving, squelching and waxing or lying or putting to test or resisting Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But first, if you haven't understood to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by making yourselves into a great and clear and unique gala exposition of your sins in the word of the light of the Lord. And what is the point of teaching to you the power in the divine dinosphere when we reside in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, representing my Christ? Therefore, dear brethren, he says, Thou art good, Thob, agreeable, O Lord, and do good. That is again, Thob, all is pleasing. And then he says, Lamad, teach me. Thy choke, the prescription which has been demanded by you, not what we have to look, but it is what you have demanded us, so that help our eyes to look in those standards, rather being rebellions. And that's why the Syrophoenician woman's heart we need to learn. Here we look, dear brethren. Christ Jesus says, when she comes and asks, saying to the point that he would clean her daughter from the devil possession what she is Jesus said unto her let her, let the children be filled first or be filled with the word of the Lord or satisfy that his cortazo in abundance for it is not meat that's what he meant to say callous beautiful handsome or excellent to take the children's that is technon again the word for us bread 
the food of them, and cast it or ballow to throw. To the dogs, he refers us, dogs. And then we need to look. She answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs, that is, the standards of Kunorian, or Caleb in the Hebrew, under the table eat of the children's, here she uses the word paideans, the young children, crumbs, that is nothing but the little morsel or a little bit that falls. And he said unto her, For this saying, the thing what you said, Go thy way, that is what to lead and die. The devil is gone out, or the demonian is gone out of thy daughter. If she wouldn't have said that even the dogs under the table eat the children crumbs, it would have been an answer not being thoughtful to the Lord. It would have been an answer of great saying to the point, humble enough to the Lord. That's why we, the church age believers, have to be cleansed so much thoroughly and we have to give an answer back like the way we have. The Syrophoenician woman gave to my Christ. Yes, Lord, as you say, we are dogs. That's why you said for us, don't throw this precious margates before dogs and pigs. That is the precious word of the Lord my God before these people. Because they don't make themselves a gala exposition of their sins. Because here the prophets have lost the truth. They go on for the death march. In Psalm 119, they are writing in the death march. Lord, before I was afflicted, I went astray. That meant to say, before you end up in depression, you go for Shagag. From Shagag, you lead for depression. But if you don't search in a gala exposition of the word of the Lord, your sins, you would not give an answer like the way have the Syrophoenician woman gave. For this saying he records, Go thy way, the dietor has been healed. That means to have such kind of a great faith in the Lord, to have such kind of a great desire to follow the Lord, to obey his word, to honor his word. If Christ our Lord of God would have given us some conditions that you shall do such and such things, then only your daughter will be cleansed. She would have earnestly done it because she loves a daughter more. But here we find only an intellectual reply by the woman in a very great humbleness to say, Lord, even the dogs eat the leftover bit of morsels under the table. That means the first things what you gave, Lord, with the angelic disposition we read in Matthew, in Acts 7.54, to the Jews what he gave, they rejected it in 53. But we have been given now to the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not just a bit of pieces on the docks under table. He has given us to be calling the mystery doctrine that has been hid from the past wise men, but now through the church age, this great mystery doctrine has been revealed so that we the babes could be great than the wise men of the past. But what are we trying out to prove? The two angels knew exact status of Lot. Every believer's heart, he knows very well what an answer would be replied from that Syrophoenician woman. Christ of Lord of God knew very well. Because that's the condition of our heart. But we come, we come to serve in lips and that's the condition of our heart. We don't want to tremble in His Word. We don't want to carry His cross every day and become His disciple. We don't want to have the kingdom of Lord God to be in the standards of righteousness, peace and great joy in power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And He knows our condition very well. As He knew the condition of Abraham. As He knew the condition of Moses. He knows our condition as well. The way how Moses tells, the same way He gives him back the reply. Exodus 4, 13-15. Aaron will speak on behalf of you. 
because what you think you can pay back according to that he's going to pay you back what you saw that he will reap with Lord God the Father be careful he is not a respecter of persons therefore he says for us in Galatians chapter 5 particularly beginning with verse number 13 is a very very important verses for us he says dear brethren For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Again, the word kaleo. The word liberty is eleutheria. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. If we truly love the Lord God, he said, you shall keep my mandates. If you truly love me, John 15, 14, whatsoever I have commanded you, you will do it. Then only you are my friends. So here he says, use not the occasion for sin, but rather use an occasion to serve one another. That is to become slaves and to encourage one another. And if you hear his words today, harden not your hearts. And he says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. And that is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour and another, one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of the another because he says this I say walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the another so that you cannot do the things that you would therefore dear brethren he says if you be led of the spirit you are not under the law and then he describes what is the flesh works and the fruit of the spirit. And then he concludes in Galatians 5.26, If you walk in the spirit, you also march in the spirit. Therefore, the things whatever you do, he concludes in Colossians 3 verses 24 and 25, that knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong, adikio, that is, wantedly thinking in his heart and he can think he can impress the people and not doing exegesis and not studying the word of the Lord and teaching them properly shall receive for the wrong that is he will be taken care komizo for the wrong what he has done again the word adikio which he hath done according to the adikio and there is no respect of persons with Lord God if you have done wrong if it were Jews he did not spare their own how much more it would be for the church, though being called to be the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, but doing not the will of God the Father. So when he did not spare his own, how do you think he can spare you? He will not. Neither he will. Do you know the reasons, dear brethren? Because until and unless you make yourself the stark exposition or a gala exposition of your sins, is not going to give you because he knows what is in your heart for the centurions faith he marveled Syrophoenicians faith he said for this saying go thy way your daughter will be healed that means there will be time when we would love to come back and grab those little morsels which fall under the table of the children of God that's what we are we don't have anything we Gentiles, what are we? We are nothing except in the church age taken to be the gift of adoption of spirit to call him as Abba Father. What are we? If it were not so, the spirit to cry out Abba Father, what we can do? Nothing. He has chosen us, predestined us. He has elected us in eternity past according to his progenisco and the provider's knowledge of his will. He has done many things for us. And we have to be thankful for it. In the same way, we have to come to collect the bit morsels that have fallen. That By that we meant to say, not even to let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, but rather teach the right word of truth to the highest. That's what we ought to be. But what is happening today in our pulpits? The Gentiles are not coming with a true-hearted nature as Christ our Lord our God prays. The Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher, they would surely know they would come to Guinness Koalatia. 
when they have learned about this word, the unbelievers would believe, yes, they have come from the God the Father, and that Christ my Lord has been sent, John 17, 23, though during the time of 96, when John the Apostle writes about Gnosticism, when they thought the crucifixion of my Christ is just a standard of blinding the eyes of these people and to make them that they were to Jesus Christ, or one was being placed, the other was taken out. So for all of these things we have to know. We as Christians first ought to know. He did not bleed to death. He gave up his ghost. The crucifixion was not taken on his behalf. So all of these things, if you know surely, then you can teach. Whether the people believe it or not, you pass down these things to your children as a torch you pass down after you die. That may include your spiritual children as physical children as well. So what a great plan we have before Lord. And he knew what was Lot's life and family. He knew what was in the heart of Seraphonician woman. Because of his omniscient knowledge, he also knew what would the centurion say. And he would also knew about us because he declares the end from the beginning. It is who is going to completely counsel us, he says in Isaiah 48. And right from the mother's womb he calls for the Israelites as rebellion. But for us he calls before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you to be holy and blameless. So which way you are going, dear brethren? Which way you are thinking? Whichever way you think, until and unless you are under the false pastor teachers, who teach not, neither emphasize not to join as disciples and grow up as grammatias and make you to be in the standards of making disciples of all the nations. You are under vain and foolish things, pastors, who emphasize your beautification on this earth rather than beautifying the Lord's glory on this earth. Therefore, they haven't discovered their iniquity to turn away the captivity, but have seen for the false burdens and causes of banishment. This is what it happens to you. If the pastor teacher is not been properly enlightened to look into the word of the Lord my God, then he sees into you false, again emptiness, worthlessness. And the word burdens, again the word masa, which is nothing but for you being smashed out. And he causes you to banish thy sin unto death, seduction. And that's what it is, the cause of seduction, enticement, to thrust you out, to drive you out. Therefore, dear brethren, they will not make you to turn away, take a U-turn from your captivity. That is, captivity, captive, twice it has been used here in the Hebrew, but we find only once the translation. When Christ, our Lord of God, when he was set free, he led the captivity captive and led them released. We looked at in Ephesians 4. But here, to turn away thy captivity, captivity it has to be in the Hebrew. It is Shabut, Shabut. But in the English, we have only once, thy captivity. And what is that captivity of captivity you are put on? False and vain teachings in your pulpits. So, dear brethren, Christ our Lord our God knows about us very well. You may try to play games with him, but you will be filled with false burdens and you will be caused to banish. That is, you will be drawn aside till you are being Christ-centered. And Christ, our Lord of God, prayed, the Rimata has been declared to them. The right work of the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher has been taught to them. But they haven't come to do the will. What a great pain it would be for us to look. When these people haven't come to understand the reality of the word. And yet, these people are happy to think they can do it. But Lord God the Father knows very well what is in your heart. Till he could come back and gala expose your word. In the light of the mirror of Bible doctrine, 
He knows the very word what you speak. Is it from your lips? Or is it from the learnt Bible doctrine in your soul? You cannot kid with him. Neither you can think he could be mocked. Because he knows the Technon children, who they are, how the scribes would grow up from their lives. And he knows very well to make up your life as the Vimata declarations and to teach you the full Gnosis truth. So that believing that Gnosis truth, you would become a Pinosis and you would become a wise master builder to witness the truth of the Lord. And he knows very well how to pay us back because with him there is no respecter of persons. And he will pay us back what we sow in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to produce for him higher fruit, higher glory to the highest. So dear brethren, use your occasion not to sin. The liberty given to you to stand fast in the Spirit and come back to your senses and learn why I have been kept alive. Because Lord God always does good and teacheth good, and if He teaches to us His prescription of the Word of the Lord, our lives will be brightened up. Our lives will have new definition, new meaning. Rather than loath, our life would be like Abraham, walking by faith. To do the work of the Lord. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, yet the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And that responsibility is not a burdensome, it is the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leading us to do His will only for the praise of His glory. And if you don't understand these things, dear brethren, let Lord God help you, because it's what you decide in your heart to completely subject yourself for His work or come to serve him in a lip service and do not subject him for his work. So dear brethren, you need to think about these issues and as the word of the Lord God leads us to the praise of his glory, we shall continue as God the Holy Spirit leadeth us tomorrow to learn more and more about him and to declare his righteousness to these people who are perishing without knowing my Christ. So think over this issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly to link Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mark is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor, teacher, the greatest merit is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and you not worry besides nature, the entire angelic cross will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the standards of Bible doctrine. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again we come into the grace for the praise of their work. Father, you know very well what is in our heart. If we would make not gala exposition of these things, and come back and turn away and look to be free from the captivity of captives what they have taken according to their own will as stated in 2 Timothy 2, 24-26 they shall not be the people for their work I tell Lord these people having to play kiddism with your Lord they have just changed the things of the word into lie and precepts of man Father if it is thy will O Lord according to their word correct them, instruct them once again Establish the standards of truth in the pulpits so that sovereign Lord they could be because every believer you have called to put in his mouth thy words to plan the things of the heaven and to foundation on the earth according to thy word for that cause you have concealed us and covered us under your wings so that we could come back and drink 
from thy rivers of pleasure every day the fountains of life and lead them to their work to the section father every believer is valuable in thy sight if there is any delay from our part O oh lord quicken us to do thy work and help our mind to be always occupied in thy word and to be burdened as thou would be burdened if you were here on this earth help us father to do thy will as much as we can as long as we have breath in our nostrils before the rapture or death whichever could come first to the section father we pray give us a team of scribes who could lead us to thy work so that we could be faithful witness of the all the days of this life on this earth and be not mingling ourselves into the world but rather sanctifying apart and keeping only for thy glory and doing thy will and giving you rest under our tree under our life and making you to eat milk butter and meat in christ matchless pure love gracious name we pray father may lord god the holy spirit enlighten and challenge us by this words amen